we have had a pandemic on this planet with a few million people dead, which we will, which we may never know whether or not it was a lab leak because there was definitely cover up. <laughs> we don't know that if there was a lab leak, but we know that the people who did the research, like you know, like put out the whole paper about this definitely wasn't a lab leak and didn't reveal that they had been doing had like sent off coronavirus coronavirus research to the Wuhan Institute of Virology after it was banned in the United States, after the gain-of-function research was temporarily banned in the United States, and the same people who exported gain-of-function research on coronaviruses to the Wuhan Institute of Virology after it was gain of function, that gain-of-function gain research was temporarily banned in the United States are now getting more grants to do more research on gain-of-function research on coronaviruses. Maybe we do better in this than in AI, but like this is not something we cannot take for granted that there's going to be an outcry. Yeah. People have different thresholds for when they start to outcry. Yeah, there we can't is take no... for granted, but I, I think your intuition is that there's a very high probability that this event happens without us solving the alignment problem. And I guess that's where I'm trying to build up more uh, perspectives and color on this intuition. Is it possible that the probability is not something like 100%, but is like 32% <laughs> that uh, AI will escape the box before we solve the alignment problem? Not solve, but is it possible we always stay ahead of the AI in terms of our ability to solve for that particular system, the alignment problem? Nothing like the world in front of us right now. You've already seen it that 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 GPT four is not turning out this way, and there are like basic obstacles where you've got the the weak version of the system that doesn't know enough to deceive you, and the strong version of the system that could deceive you if it wanted to do that. If it was already like sufficiently unaligned to want to deceive you, there's the question of like how on the current paradigm you train honesty when the humans can no longer tell if the system is being honest. You don't think these are research questions that could be answered? I think they could be answered if 50 years with unlimited retries, the way things usually work in science. I just disagree with that. You're making it 50 years, I, I think, with the kind of attention this gets, with the kind of funding it gets, it could be answered, uh, not in whole, but in incrementally, within within months and within a, a small number of years. If, it, if it's a, if it's, at scale receives attention in research. And so if you start studying large language models, I think there was an intuition like two years ago even that something like GPT-4, the current capabilities of even chat GPT with GPT-3.5 is not, is gonna, we're still far away from that. I think a lot of people are surprised by the capabilities of GPT-4, right? So now people are waking up, okay, well, we need to study these language models. I think there's going to be a lot of interesting AI safety research. Are the are Earth's billionaires going to put up like the the giant prizes that would maybe incentivize young hotshot people who just got their physics degrees to not go to the hedge funds and instead put everything into interpretability in this like one small area where we can actually tell whether or not somebody has made a discovery or not? I think so because uh, I, I think so. Uh, well, that's what these these conversations are about because they're going to wake up to the fact that GPT four can be used to manipulate elections, to influence geopolitics, to influence the economy. There's a lot of there, there's going to be a huge amount of incentive to like wait a minute. We can't. This has to be. We have to put. We have to make sure they're not doing damage. We have to make sure we interpretability. We have to make sure we understand how these systems function so that we can predict their effect on economy so that there's a- So a, there's a, a feudal moral panic and, and a bunch of op-eds in the New York Times and nobody actually stepping forth and saying, you know what, instead of a mega yacht, I'd rather put that billion dollars on prizes for young hotshot physicists who make fundamental breakthroughs in interpretability. The yacht versus the interpretability research, the old uh, the old trade off. Uh, <laughs> I I just I think uh, it's I, just I, I yeah. think there's going to be a huge amount of allocation of funds. I hope. I bet. hope. I guess you want to bet me on that. What, you want to put a time scale on it? Say how much funds you think are going to be allocated in a direction that I would consider to be actually useful. <laughs> By what time? I do think there will be a huge amount of funds. 
but you're saying it needs to be open, right? The development of the system should be closed, but the development of the, the, the interpretability research, the AI safety research- Oh, broadly. we are so far behind on interp under ter ter interpretability compared to capabilities. Like, yeah, you could, you could take the last generation of systems the, the stuff that's already in the open, there is so much in there that we don't understand. There are so many prizes you could do before you, you know, you could, you, you could, you, you would have enough insights that you'd be like, oh, you know, like, well, we understand how these systems work. We understand how these things are doing their outputs. We can read their minds. Now let's try it with the, the bigger systems. Yeah, we're nowhere near that. You, 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 we, there is so much interpretability work to be done on the weaker versions of the systems.